Sometimes propaganda is obvious. Sometimes it's hidden. Other times they try to hide it, but it's so cringy it parodies itself. The ABC's Radio National recently produced what it calls an investigation into Australia's own rising nationalist movement. The taxpayer-funded ABC is our largest far-left media organisation. Its position on most issues is clear. They believe in man-made global warming, they think we should take more refugees, they think higher taxes are good for the economy, and more, etc, etc. It's no surprise at all that they take a stand against the rising populist nationalist movement around the world. It conflicts directly with their taxpayer-funded interests. The so-called investigative report starts out with a trigger warning, because most leftists are snowflakes, it then makes a quick reference to the Charlottesville protest of 2017 before getting into the nitty gritty. Let's find out exactly what the left thinks of Australians who dare stand up for the interests of Australians and watch as they desperately smear anyone who dares to say things the NPC left don't like. Australian people generally feel uh, ostracised from society because they don't have anything they're allowed to be proud of. There was already division when I arrived in this society. I'm merely pointing it out to you, so do not shoot the messenger. And Alex Mann, they've got a new haircut. That's it. They call it the fashy haircut, short for fascist. It's like a modern day short back and sides. Right away they betray their bias. They give you a grab from Blair Cottrell, who makes a great point, then immediately mention the fashy haircut. The goal here is to make the listener connect nationalism to fascism and not ask questions. The white supremacist movement is going through a bit of a rebrand. So gone are the lace-up boots and the skinheads, um, and in their place are these ironic and highly offensive racist memes, which gives a bit of plausible deniability, and then there's the good old dose of anti-Semitism. The fashy styles and the modern comms style has combined with this global rise of far-right politics. And now, particularly overseas and here in Australia, it's attracting a growing number of educated young men. He's right about one thing. It's certainly attracting a large number of educated and highly intelligent young men. Not educated at university necessarily, educated through their own research and reading. Not once through this entire podcast do they even acknowledge the fact that these young men are responding to a very real problem. The destruction of our nations and national identity through globalism, mass migration and far-left propaganda backed by huge and pervasive government. What else would you expect from the far-left ABC? So I had to do a lot of good old-fashioned gumshoe journalism and that meant, yes, lurking around online, but also lurking on a stakeout. I smell porkies! You may be onto something there, short bus. Journalism is reporting on recent events and presenting them objectively. There is nothing objective about this report. It's pure propaganda. The mainstream media lie, and the ABC are the worst of all because they do it with money stolen from you. I'm trying not to look like a weirdo, but it's hard to be inconspicuous when you're sitting in a car at dusk talking into a microphone. It's also impossible to not be a weirdo and work for the ABC at the same time. Just saying. I've been told that this is the secret Sydney headquarters of the men's only club, the Lad Society. Yeah, it's tote secret. I mean, it's so secret they put the Melbourne address on the website. But I guess if he wanted the location of the Sydney clubhouse, he'd have to go to the effort of <gasps> emailing them and asking for it. It's journalism, I swear! But the videos they've posted online provide an insight into what goes on inside. Ooh, this is the real deal. This is no bullshit. Young men with boxing gloves duke it out in a flurry of punches while others clap and shout in a circle around them. The thing about radio is there are no images. So let's see what he's actually talking about. Look at all those men duking it out with uh, boxing gloves on. Monitored by other men just in case someone gets properly hurt and stuff. The sheer horror of it all. Barrel chested men lift weights in what looks like a garage turned into a private gym. 
funny that because it just so happens to be a garage turned into a private gym. It's journalism, Matty. Give him a break. It's tough to pin down, though, exactly what the Lad Society stands for. Really? You could have just asked the leader, you know. The purpose of this organisation was to build a community of young Australian men to provide job networking, mental and physical health, as well as an open space for communication. As we know, Australia might not be going in the direction we want it to, and there's very little we can do at a political level. And this community, this club that we're building, this network of like-minded Australian men, is not so much a political organisation, but a community initiative. Our idea is solving problems with community by making sure that we're all self-improving, we've all got good physical uh, fitness, mental health, um, job security, uh, and basically the whole idea of this is reinvigorating the Australian culture. It's a community organisation for Aussie men. There are hundreds of organisations for Africans, Asians, for Jews, for women, and pretty much every group. Many even get taxpayer funding. Yet, for some reason, if Aussie blokes want their own community organisation, that's somehow a bad thing, at least in the eyes of the establishment. That's racist! It certainly is, short bus. So it's a community group. There are conservatives, liberty-minded people, people who just want a group of men to spend time with, and yes, there's even... National Socialists! It's okay to disagree. It's okay to disagree. I know. No, no, you don't. It's okay to disagree. 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 And yes, I strongly oppose all forms of socialism, but refusing to engage with someone just because you strongly disagree with them is childish. It's counterproductive and, dare I say it, makes you a big girl's blouse. But the club is similar in several respects to some of the most extreme far-right men's clubs from around the world. The nationalist messaging, the flags on the wall, the nostalgia over so-called lost masculine values. And then there's the fight club bit using violence as a marketing tool. Boxing. They are boxing. A way for men to get their aggression out, get fit, and bond as a community of men. Boxing, otherwise known as sport, otherwise known as ritualized violence. You see, all sport is ritualized violence, but we don't call it violence unless we're leftists making a political propaganda piece for taxpayer-funded far-left media organizations. He also frames Australian flags, Australian values, and masculinity as somehow far right. And everyone knows far right just means national socialist to NPCs, as we'll later discover. What I want to know is why Alex Mann hates his country and masculinity. Too much soy, I guess. Yeah, yeah, moving on. He also has Blair Cottrell. He's one of the group's co-founders, and here he is outlining his vision for them back in June. It's an interview with the alt-right media channel, The Unshackled. Hello everyone, we're here with Australia's uh, most well-known patriot, uh, Blair Cottrell, welcome. Thanks mate. Uh, currently we're in our uh, clubhouse, it's just a community group that myself and some of my colleagues built together, and uh, so far it's really taken off. That's one of my favourite bits in the whole thing. The pregnant pause with tension music is brilliant, but I just love the reference to the far-right website The Unshackled, followed by Tim Wilms. Let's hear it again. It's an interview with the alt-right media channel The Unshackled. Hello everyone, we're here with Australia's uh, most well-known patriot, uh, Blair Cottrell. Welcome. Thanks, mate. <laughs> oh, that's great. Watch out, leftists. Tim Wilms is coming to get you. Of course, it wouldn't be a complete far-left propaganda piece featuring Blair Cottrell if they didn't mention this. Blair Cottrell has a history of racially charged activity. 
He's called for photos of Hitler to be displayed in every classroom and a copy of Mein Kampf to be given to every student. Only that's completely untrue and is actually defamatory. He never said those things and the ABC knows it. It's a fake account repeatedly called out as a fake account. It's journalism, Manny. Duh. Yeah, totally. All we want is the best for our own people. If I were a member of any other race in this world, that would be something which would be commendable, even funded by the government. But because I'm white, it's, it's evil. Damn right. You said that it was important to avert a crisis for our people. Do you mean white people? Yeah, predominantly. I think I mean white people, white Aussies, yeah. So is Lad Society a white supremacist organisation? <laughs> Why do you ask me that question? Do you hate white people? Do you have anything against white people as an as a ethnic group? After weeks of trawling through closed Facebook groups and financial records, I've uncovered a web of far-right connections between the members, connections to a global movement. And I can tell you conclusively, for the first time, the alt-right, young, savvy, nationalist are covertly joining mainstream political parties right here in Australia, and they're seeking to influence the heart of our democracy. In other words, young people who are not leftists are doing what leftists have done for decades now to subvert our democracy and push it to the left. The left have a problem with white patriots doing this because they did this and they know it's effective. Deep down, the left are anti-white, anti-West and thus anti-Australia. Never forget that. Across the world right now, the conversation is shifting. Brexit, Trump and the global rise of the far right have given licence to new voices on the radical fringe. What was once considered unspeakable has entered the mainstream. It was only unspeakable because far left gatekeepers controlled the narrative and slandered anyone who dared speak out against the far left multiculti rubbish. They silenced any and all opposition to the cult of globalism. Only now, through the power of the internet, does the common man have a true voice. You'd think the ABC communists would be happy about the power returning to the people. Apparently not. That would require them to be logically consistent, Matty, and we all know how the left are with that. Ah, uh, yes, of course, I nearly forgot. In Australia, we've got Queensland Senator Fraser Anning. I believe that the reason for ending all further Muslim immigration are both compelling and self-evident. The final solution to the immigration problem, of course, is a popular vote. His controversial maiden speech included a Nazi phrase referring to the extermination of Jewish people, something Anning says was taken out of context. You see, it's just that Anning says it was out of context. It's not that the media and political elite overreacted like triggered babies. You can watch my video on this. It's called Fraser Anning Did Nothing Wrong, and I'll link in the description. Whatever the case, the speech has made him a poster boy for the alt-right a network of loosely connected groups united by a common vision. Yes, a common vision to preserve white European nations, peoples and cultures. How could we? How could white people dare want to exist and preserve our own culture and history? How racist of us. Now we've had the setup, the ABC moves on to the main point of their propaganda. That is, trotting out the cherry-picked far-left experts to tell us how bad the so-called far-right truly are. AC Thompson first reported on white supremacists 20 years ago. He says for a long time the US movement went quiet, but there's been a recent resurgence. So middle of 2016, there was all this new energy coming into the white power movement. All kinds of new groups, new publications, new leaders, and a whole new way of organizing, which was organizing via Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and other social platforms. I think a, a thing that's interesting about the alt-right is that it's created uh, an entire subculture. So it's as much a subculture as it is a political movement. Notice how they frame it as the white power movement. Throughout this piece, they interchange white power, neo-Nazi, alt-right, and far right constantly. It's just repetitive gaslighting designed to smear anyone who disagrees with the left and implant the idea that nationalism is inherently a bad thing. 
Notice how he laments the fact that people who aren't of the globalist establishment are using social media to talk to each other. This has become a common trope of the NPC left. It is little more than an attempt at justifying censorship of anyone who dares disagree. Finally, it's not subculture. It's the counterculture. Get used to it, ladies and soy boys. Nationalism will soon become the dominant culture, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. The alt-right is not a cohesive movement. Its members exist on a spectrum from right-wing conservatives and nationalists at one end, right through to hardcore white supremacists and neo-Nazis at the other. There is constant debate about what makes a patriot, who are the genuine nationalists, and just where exactly everybody fits into that. It's a spectrum, you see, but all under the same label of m alt right or m far right. Same, same, but different, but totally the same, if you get me. This is why the left have called national socialists far right for decades now. It's nothing but a way of demonizing all nationalists as national socialists. Nationalism and socialism are not the same thing. Just because someone loves their own people and nation doesn't mean they want to round up the Juden, invade Poland and start World War II. Duh! Now the highest profile public figureheads of this global new right are coming to Australia and they're finding enthusiastic audiences. Yeah, I think that's been a real phenomenon, right? The rise of the sort of right-wing media star and the fact that these sort of right-wing uh, media figures are really heavily um, trafficking in the politics of resentment, polarization, and demagoguery. And that's sort of been the currency for them. That is their stick. That's their deal, right? Remember the first rule of leftist club, always lie and always project. Resentment, polarization and demagoguery is exactly what the leftist establishment have been doing for decades every time they call a patriot a racist. It's exactly what the leftist establishment does when they whine about more white privilege and more misogyny. The left attack us, divide us, and shame us into silence. Then, when we finally stand up for ourselves and find our voice, they whine about it like NPC babies. That's like punching someone in the face, then whining about violence when they punch you back. The left always project, and the left always lie. In December last year, it was Milo Yiannopoulos. Soon, feminists will be so endangered, they really will be like buffaloes. We'll be keeping them in zoos. Those ugly reminders of our hideous past. It's sort of, you know, something like a Holocaust museum, you know? The museum of... Oh, stop it. In July this year, Canadian Lauren Southern visited. If I were black, I could say I'm proud. If I were Asian, I could say I'm proud. If I were any other ethnicity, I could say I'm proud because that's how our culture is. But if I'm white and I say I'm proud, the media will go nuts. And very soon in November, Gavin McInnes, co-founder of Vice magazine, who has since gone on to create an extremist men's club called the Proud Boys, is coming to town. We have one caveat, and that is you have to be a Western chauvinist. <laughs> and you have to think the West is the best. And it exploded. <laughs> Just so you remember, ladies and soy boys, Nationalists are the same as National Socialists, are the same as Milo, a gay Greek Jew, Lauren Southern, an actual journalist, and Gavin McInnes, a guy who loves the West and wants to venerate dads. Notice how they use the term extremist men's group. The inference here being that if you love the West and you are a man, you must be an extremist and extremism is always bad. Just like extreme generosity, extreme love and extreme free speech. Not an argument. It's not an argument. It's not an argument. And of course, he can't leave out the great one. As the former leader of the UK Independence Party, Nigel Farage is artful in walking the line of what's acceptable to say in public and what's not. He said he feels awkward hearing foreign languages on the train and has declared that parts of the country are unrecognisable because of the number of migrants there. At the height of the Brexit campaign, he was accused of deploying Nazi-style propaganda in a bid to stir up anti-immigrant sentiment, something he denies. Someone accused him, and that's relevant because narrative or something. This so-called journalist is using Nazi-style propaganda in my view.
breaking news. ABC propagandist Alex Mann accused of using Nazi tactics to smear political opponents. Mann is yet to comment on the accusations. But here in Australia, it's clear that people are watching what's happening around the world and learning from it. And now there's a handful of new groups with names like Identity Australia and the True Blue Crew emerging with new tactics. One of the most radical is Antipodean resistance. So two groups entirely concerned with protecting Australia's culture and identity are somehow equivalent to a flat out national socialist group. Remember, the left want you to think that nationalism equals national socialism. It's obvious propaganda, it's a lie, and... Not an argument. It's not an argument. It's not an argument. Yeah, but didn't you know? Oranges are fruit. Apples are fruit. Therefore, apples are oranges. Duh! Um, not quite short, bus. Oh. Next up, we get the fabulous input of New South Wales Young Nationals Executive Member Ethan Gordon. It's fun to go to a Young Nats conference. You know, you have a lot of friends in the Young Nats and everyone is up for a good time like most people in the regions are. The party has, in the past, been outspoken on progressive or liberal issues. My family has a farm up in the Northern Tablelands and um, when I did join I was pleased to see that actually there's quite a progressive voice in the Young National Party. Remember, progressive really means far left. What this proves is the far left have infiltrated what are traditionally conservative parties, something many of us have been saying for years. New South Wales Young Nationals recently voted for marriage equality, increasing the cap for Syrian refugees and an emissions intensity scheme. Like I said, communists have infiltrated the Young Nationals. At this year's state conference, they were debating the policy platform and electing new leadership. Ethan was the communications officer for the New South Wales executive, and straight away, he noticed that something was different. Ooh, what was that? Let me guess. He noticed that genuine conservatives were trying to take the party back from commie infiltrators, right? Then, one of the new members stood up and put forward a motion about migration control. The member's name was Clifford Jennings. The next thing that happened was, and I'll read it to you actually, that the New South Wales Young Nationals endorse immigration from culturally compatible peoples and nations, but support strict immigration controls from those who are not. Called it. Clifford Jennings also put forward motions on offering refugee status to white South African farmers and the expansion of coal on top of the migration control motion. How could he? Doesn't he know that white South African farmers are white? We can't help them now, can we? A lot of these new members you know, had remained relatively silent during a lot of previous motions on agriculture or roads and stuff like that, the stuff that Young Nats usually debate. But when we got to this motion, suddenly everyone was up almost simultaneously, you know, to lining up at the microphone to have their say on it. So he's upset people dared to join the party and talk about things he doesn't want to talk about. That's all. He wants to talk about mundane things like roads and farms and gay marriage. You know, good progressive things. They wanted to talk about big issues like immigration and energy costs. Those pesky plebs want to talk about things and we can't have that now, can we? The Young Nats Conference isn't a forum for debate and discussing things of genuine national importance, you see. Who does this Clifford Jennings bloke think he is? It looked like a classic branch stack to Ethan and the other members of the executive, as if Clifford Jennings and the other new members had a specific goal to push the party to the right. Wait, what? To the right? How could he? This is the Young Nats. Totally not a party that's supposed to be conservative nationalists or anything. They are progressives. How could anyone dare want to push the party in any direction but further left? How horrendous. Who does this Clifford Jennings bloke think he is? We were concerned that there was an already pre-organised group infiltrating the Young Nationals in an attempt to gain positions of power so they could have influence over policy. Let's not sugarcoat it, shall we? Poor Ethan was concerned his position as a far-left apparatchik within the Young Nats was under threat. He was concerned that someone might join the party who would dare move it away from what he deems acceptable and threaten the wider progressive, aka far-left, establishment. Meanwhile, leftists have been doing exactly this all through our society for decades now. 
infesting media, academia, and political parties. They even have a name for it, the Long March Through the Institutions. Ethan Gordon being a clear and perfect example of this strategy. Remember, leftists always lie, and leftists always project. The irony being, Alex Mann accidentally did journalism by exposing the far-left infiltration of the New South Wales Young Nats. Well done, Alex. Yay, journalism! So now that we've had a leftist journalist and a leftist apparatchik, all we need to complete the trifecta of evil is a leftist academic. Enter anti-capitalist, anti-free speech campaigner Kaz Ross, an Asian studies lecturer at the University of Tasmania. A woman who in the past said social media was not a public square and companies like Facebook should remove what she deems abuse. But in her examples of abuse were literally just opinions she didn't like. You aren't serious, are you? Deadly serious. This is the ABC's academic expert on the rise of nationalism. It's journalism! I started off tracking anti-Chinese sentiment and I got involved in looking at anti-Chinese action on Facebook generally in Australia and there's a very, very short pathway from anti-Chinese sentiment to neo-Nazis. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. I nearly forgot about that slippery slope. It's like my cousin Cecil. One day he was talking about keeping the Chinese government out of Australian agriculture. The next, he wanted to invade France. It became really clear that there were a number of Facebook profiles that were sharing the same sort of stuff and liking each other's stuff. And then I gathered together a list of names of these people. I became aware that there were groups operating and they wanted to shift that into real life action. And the main real world goal that I could see was actually shifting political debate in Australia to the right as much as possible. Wait, no, it can't be. Say it ain't so. Yes. The good doctor, through hard work and in-depth analysis of Facebook groups, realised that people who aren't leftists want to shift opinion to their side of the debate. Truly groundbreaking stuff. Give this lady a Pulitzer Prize. It's journalism? No short pass. It's academia. Of course, the only problem she has is they want to pull the debate in a direction that she doesn't like. In other words, her problem is that they have free speech and, as mentioned, she really does not like free speech. I guess what I'm worried about most with these groups, if the group is Reclaim Australia and they're against mosques and they're protesting on the street, you know what they stand for. If the person has a law degree or a politics degree, they're working as a staffer in somebody's politics office, um, but they actually have very strong neo-Nazi or fascist beliefs, and then they've got a kind of an underground movement to influence politics, to push it to the right. Yeah, I am concerned about that, because it's not up front. Well, I guess she must be quite concerned about the covert far-left takeover of the media, mainstream political parties and universities. She must be super concerned about the covert communist roots of Hollywood, right? She must be super duper concerned about globalists opening our borders and flooding white nations with non-whites in order to replace us in our own countries while calling it multiculturalism, never giving us a vote on the issue and crying racist when anyone dares speak out against it. Yeah, right, Matty. Again, she's only concerned that they are attempting to move society in a direction she doesn't like. Faux concerns about it being underground are obvious BS. What does she expect people to do? Whenever anyone genuinely stands up for their own people and nation, the establishment left slander them and then attack them. The left censored any dissent and, shock horror, the dissent went underground. This idiot has no credibility. What are Asian studies anyway? Sounds like taxpayer funded nonsense. No wonder she's a communist. And of course, she calls National Socialism and its brother Fascism right-wing because her position is not intellectually honest. It's one of pure far-left ideology and, once again, as we should all know by now, the left project and the left lie. 
this podcast is well worth listening to in full. They claim it's hard-hitting journalism, but it's pure leftist propaganda from the very first minute to the very last. It's a classic example of the ABC pretending to do a balanced and objective report while producing something that's so clearly designed to manipulate it should be obvious to anyone with more than half a brain. It gets three so-called experts to discuss their experience with the so-called alt-right and obviously their experiences are all going to be negative. They blatantly attempt to smear conservatives, libertarians and nationalists with the brush of national socialism because it suits the far left agenda. They use music to elicit worry and apprehension in the listener as all good propagandists do. Just like you, Matty. Yep. It's interesting because it offers a glimpse into how they see their political opponents and it shows the left are genuinely getting worried about the growing nationalist movement. In their minds, they need to expose it and label it as bad before it gets out of control. Too bad for them the internet exists, so people can do their own research and make up their own minds. Worse still for the far left, people are naturally nationalistic and deep down, they know it. People naturally gravitate towards their own and the natural nation is families connected to other families in one big extended family known as ethnicity or race. Birds of a feather flock together as they say. We've only forgotten this due to relentless globalist propaganda over decades and only now are the people waking up from our slumber. This is what they are truly scared of. Not of young men boxing in a club, not of people daring to join political parties, not of my national socialists under the bed but of a true awakening of European racial consciousness. They are scared European peoples will wake up to our own demographic replacement and start to fight back. This is why they smear anyone calling out violence against white South Africans as national socialist conspiracy theories. What this propaganda piece from the ABC shows us isn't that there's some mystical threat of national socialists. What it shows is that nationalists are moving society in a direction that the far left don't like and they are sure as hell scared of this fact because it threatens their power. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other stuff, subscribe if you want to, leave a donation if you are super super awesome and I'll see ya when I see ya. The first rule of Pink Club is you don't talk about Pink Club. The second rule of Pig Club, you don't talk about Pig Club. What's Pig Club, short bus?